benissimo, iniziamo. Ok, I think uh, we could start uh, this uh, November session of the Young Seminar of the uh, Italian Society of Statistical Physics. Today, as usual, we have uh, two speaker, speakers, Francesco Petizzol and Paola Ruggero. We start with uh, Francesco and then we'll have uh, the, the talk of Paola after. So let me say a, a few words about Francesco. Francesco Petizzol got his master's degree at University of Trieste. He then did a PhD at University of Parma. And during his PhD, he also spent some time at Imperial College London. After his PhD, he did a one year postdoc in Parma. And now he's doing another postdoc at Technica University of Berlin. Francesco is presenting a talk on non-equilibrium quantum state preparation with driven system in engineered bath. So please, uh, Francesco. Uh, okay, I will share my screen. Okay, can you see my first slide? Yes, yes. Okay, then um, I will start. Uh, first of all, Please. thank you very much for uh, for the introduction, and also uh, I really thank you for giving me the opportunity to give this talk. What I will be talking about today are uh, quantum systems and ways to uh, control them. In particular, I will um, discuss how coherent control, so unitary dynamics, can be combined with controlled forms of dissipation to uh, prepare uh, interesting quantum states. So. Let me give a bit of uh, general motivation. So uh, among different ways to control a quantum system, uh, uh, a very interesting methodology is that of uh, so-called Floquet engineering. The idea behind Floquet engineering is that uh, a periodically driven system can, uh, if, if monitored only at certain uh, points in the evolution, can mimic uh, the, the dynamics of a completely different system that um, can thus, uh, and this property can thus be used to simulate other quantum systems that are not accessible uh, directly uh, in the lab. Uh, on the other hand, coherent control, it's not the, the, the cannot uh, give a universal control knob on the system. For instance, it wouldn't be possible to remove entropy from a system just by unitary dynamics. And so another very interesting um, idea is that to uh, do so-called reservoir engineering, so to engineer the type of environment that a system uh, feels. The question that I will uh, discuss today will be, will be the following. So first of all, can the, these two techniques be combined together? So can one exploit the reservoir engineering uh, at the level of, the, of a model that has been simulated through periodic driving and on the other hand, uh, can if this is possible, then can be can this be used to prepare interesting non-equilibrium uh, quantum states? So let me introduce a bit better now these two uh, ingredients that I just showed. First of all, uh, let's talk about Floquet engineering. So uh, as I said, this regards uh, periodically driven systems, so, so Hamiltonians that are periodic in time. And here we have Floquet theory that predicts th that the evolution for such a system, the evolution operator, can be always decomposed into two pieces. One piece has the familiar form of, of, of a time evolution propagator in quantum mechanics, so with a time independent generator. The second part is uh, time periodic again and maps to the identity at integer multiples uh, of the driving period. The result is that if we probe the dynamics only at stroboscopic times, so only at end multiple multiples of the, the driving period, the dynamics looks as if it was generated only by this uh, this uh, time time let's say stroboscopic uh, Hamiltonian, and crucially this this stroboscopic Hamiltonian can be very different and have very different properties from uh, the original Hamiltonian. This is just depicted here. So we have quick oscillations that come from our periodic driving. And, on top, and if we look at the end of each oscillation period, we will have a more regular dynamics governed by this uh, Floquet, so-called, or effective Hamiltonian. So the general idea behind uh, Floquet engineering is just that of 
uh, designing uh, periodic controls that generate uh, cert some desired uh, effective uh, Hamiltonian. And there are recipes to, to compute and estimate such a, uh, such a Floquet Hamiltonian, especially in the limit of large driving frequencies. In this case, one can write down a perturbative expansion for the for this sorry for this end of period Hamiltonian that uh, to first order is given by the time average. As I said, this um, flock engineering can be used for quantum simulations so to make uh, our laboratory system to mimic the dynamics of another uh, maybe more complex system. And for instance, during uh, my PhD in Parma, I studied applications to so-called shortcuts to adiabaticity uh, protocols and for the engineering of interactions beyond pairwise uh, coupling. Now, the second ingredient that is that of reservoir engineering, and for that we will make use uh, of a cavity. So a cavity can be thought of as a, a quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator with a, a certain uh, resonance uh, frequency. In this talk, the type of uh, physical systems that I will consider, and I will discuss this later, are so-called superconducting qubits, as you superconducting circuits, so these cavities in this, in my case, will be essentially uh, so-called microwave uh, resonators. However, let's say that um, our system that couples to uh, this harmonic oscillator as a coupling uh, of this form, so it couples to uh, what we could call the fluctuations in the number of photons that are inside this cavity mode. Then one can um, use Fermi, Fermi's golden rule to predict uh, what would be the transition probability between two eigenstates uh, of our system. So the, apart from a mat the, the matrix element of the of system operator involved, the main ingredient here is the spectral density of these fluctuations in the number of, of photons. Uh, the, the point here is that when one at the same time pumps the cavity and lets it leak uh, photons with a height rate, the spectral density uh, will have a, a specific form that depends uh, on the on the detuning, so on the difference between the pump frequency and the resonance frequency of the ca uh, cavity. The main point here is that this uh, spectral density, which has a, a Lorentzian shape, will peak either at positive energies or at negative energies, depending whether or frequencies, sorry, with, uh, depending on whether the pump frequency will be uh, higher or larger or smaller than the resonance frequency. The result is that photons that are incident in the cavity will tend to uh, absorb or release energy into the system that lies within the cavity. If one sets um, this the tuning from resonance to be exactly equivalent to a given transition in the system, then depending whether the pump frequency is below or above the resonance frequency, one will be able to induce dissipative transitions uh, in the system. Okay. Now, these were the two main uh, pillars of, of this talk, the two main phenomena that I will exploit. And let me now describe the, the, the physical system that I, I will uh, use in the following. So this is given by uh, so, okay, an array of so-called superconducting qubits, even though these systems are called qubits because they're often used for uh, applications in quantum information processing, they can actually be described by uh, a Hamiltonian which involves also not only two levels, but more levels, in particular by a Bose-Hubbard uh, Hamiltonian. So what we can think that there are some microwave uh, photons that circulate in our superconducting uh, circuit and that can tunnel among different qubits and also um, they can decide whether or not to, to, to sit on top of each other depending on whether the interaction, the on-site interaction will be uh, positive or negative. And okay, and we will have local local onset potentials. So the first ingredient, so for engineering, periodic driving, is introduced in the system by, for instance, making the local potentials uh, to oscillate quickly. Then the reservoir engineering is done by coupling individually some of these superconducting qubits to to the cavities. Uh, this might look uh, a bit artificial, but this is actually routinely uh, done in experiments. This is just uh, uh, okay, an image taken from this paper where uh, just to, to show you that the superconducting qubits can be individually coupled both for performing measurements or uh, as to, to couple them to engineer the reservoirs, they can be coupled to individually to resonators. In general, the, the, the 
the, the coupling between the superconducting qubits and um, and the cavities will will allow the exchange of excitations in the system. So this the type of interaction will be different from the one that one would need for performing the type of uh, reservoir engineering that I've uh, discussed uh, before. Okay, now now I'll try to put this, these two ingredients uh, together. And uh, the idea is that under certain conditions that I will describe more in detail in the next uh, slide, one can derive an, an end of period Hamiltonian, which has a, per, a particular shape. It, this total uh, Hamiltonian, which is the Hamiltonian both of, of our superconducting qubits and of the cavities, is, is given by a first term, which regards only our our superconducting qubits, that is the Hamiltonian that we want to engineer with our periodic drivings. There are some extra energy shifts that they will not play a, a particular role in what I'm going to say next. We still ha have our cavity pumps. And finally, we have a, a different type now of, uh, of qubit, ca let's say atom cavity interaction, which now it's uh, essentially of the form that we need to perform reservoir engineering. So a coupling to work with the number of photons in a cavity. The fact that we are that this Hamiltonian is derived through periodic driving uh, reflects in in the coefficients that appear in this model. In particular, these coefficients will depend both on the driving frequency and on the driving uh, amplitude. Okay, this Hamiltonian was derived under perturbation theory, and the condition for this to hold that make the that that make difficult the the interplay of flock engineering with the reservoir engineering are, are the following. So. The first condition is that one needs uh, is a flock engineering condition. So one needs a, a driving frequency which is larger as compared to the dynamics that one would like to study. So in particular, in our case, this means the, the tunneling parameters. Indeed, we don't really need this driving frequency to be the largest scale ever in the system, but we just need it to be large as compared to, to the dynamics that we want to study. So for instance, in the following, I will discuss single particle dynamics, and so we need this um, driving frequency to be larger as compared to the dynamics in such a sub subspace. The second condition is that we don't, let's say that we have our photon which circulates in the circuit, we don't want neither to, to add more photons into the circuit if we want to study, for instance, single particle dynamics, but also we don't want uh, this particle to escape through the cavities. So the this condition is avoided typically in the systems by just taking transitions frequency of the superconducting superconducting qubits that are far detuned far very different from the transition frequency of the cavity and this is what typically is called the the dispersive regime of circuit uh, quantum electrodynamics however in a, in our case because of periodic driving we have also other types of uh, of tunneling phenomena that can that can happen in particular if the driving, if some multiple of the driving frequency of the Floquet driving frequency matches exactly the difference between a, a transition energy in the system and in the cavity, then so-called photon-assisted tunneling can happen. So processes in which the extra energy for a photon to jump uh, between cavity and system is furnished or absorbed from the periodic drive. Also, this situation is to be avoided. And so overall, we need to find parameters such that um, there is a clear uh, detuning between transitions frequency of the qubits and of the cavities, but also we need our driving frequency to be incommensurate with respect to such energy gaps. Okay, um, now we have our in ingredients all together. So we have our flock engineering, and we can now, uh, and we have our coupling with the with the photon shot noise in the cavities. So what we can do now is to uh, exploit these cavities to induce transitions not among the eigenstates of the original lab systems, but among eigenstates of our time averaged uh, simulated model. And again, depending on how we set the, the, the detuning between our of the pumps from our resonators, our cavities, we can engineer a whole dissipative path that pushes the system uh, towards one uh, a given interesting state. And so we can try and use this, these ideas to prepare some interesting state, which can be, for instance, the ground state of our um, simulated Hamiltonian. All right, up to now, I just showed you like general theory. Now I want to discuss some uh, applications. And to do that, let me just make a small detour. So 
the types of applications that I will use are based on an established technique of local engineering that is that of engineering uh, so-called artificial magnetic fields. So our photons that circulate in the in the superconducting circuit wouldn't respond to a physical magnetic field. Uh, however, however, the presence of magnetic fluxes is interesting because it can induce, for instance, fr uh, frustration in, in the in, in the couplings in the system. And as I will also discuss in the following. So one way to, uh, OK, let me just say that one can find uh, appropriate driving protocols to engineer uh, to engineer a, an artificial magnetic field. The general idea is that by using certain uh, potential offsets and driving phases, one can engineer the the tunneling phase a tunneling phase between different links in the model. The reason why this corresponds to a magnetic field is, is because of the essentially of the Haranov bomb effect. So uh, a particle, a charged particle that moves in a vector potential, would acquire a phase that um, that depends on the vector potential, and it is exactly this type of phases that we engineer here and that are typically called Peyer's uh, phases. Okay. The first model that I will look at is, is a bosonic ladder. So we have a geometry like the one I was showing already in these images. And if one looks at a very large system in the presence of a magnetic flux, depending on, on, on the values of the system parameters, in particular of the tunneling rates and, and on the flux, one can have two types of, of ground states. One in which uh, one has um, chiral currents going along the legs of, the, of this ladder, or uh, vortex patterns. And this has been studied by uh, flow engineering with ultra cold atoms, for instance. Just as a reference, when I talk about currents, I mean expectation values of operators uh, of this form. Okay, so to prepare uh, a ground state similar to, to showing these patterns, so in particular, for instance, one which shows currents, one can, uh, again, I'm talking about single particle dynamics here, so one photon circulating in the circuit, we can attach two, two cavities uh, in the system and set the pumps uh, detuned from such cavities according to two different gaps, as shown in this picture, and in such a way that all the population gets, gets pumped uh, towards the, the effective ground state. And, and this ground state is it's just depicted here uh, to show that for a pi flux, a pi half uh, flux, it will show these this types of current pattern. OK, so in our system, that this is what we obtain uh, from simulations. Uh, let me stress that are, these are not simulations done with the time averaged uh, model that I derived that, that serves as a justification and for finding interesting parameter regimes. But we really looked at the whole dynamics, including periodic driving and dissipative parts. And this is also the reason why we looked at uh, mod systems with um, of moderate size, so two plaquettes. So, OK, this is just what happens in time. So the probability gets autonomously pumped towards the ground state. So I mean autonomously, meaning that the, independently from the initial state, the initial state chosen here was uh, actually the injection of one photon in just one of the sites and letting the system evolve according to this uh, total dissipative plus driven uh, uh, Hamiltonian. And the final pattern of currents is shown here and matches quite closely the one that one would have in the exact ground state. And this is also shown here in, in the numbers uh, for a comparison. One can also look at the build up of the currents in time. At the beginning, they're zero and after like quite quickly wiggling, they will settle after some time in, um, in the values with the colors uh, corresponding to the different links in our two plaquette uh, model. OK, this was the first model and I hope convinces you that one can um, exploit the periodic driving together with the dissipative, uh, an engineered dissipative path to prepare uh, non-equilibrium states. The second model is that of a uh, so-called Aronov bomb cage. Uh, here we are considering now, we will consider again two plaquettes, but they are arranged in a, not more, not in a ladder, but in a uh, rhombic chain. And here, the phenomenon, the interesting phenomenon is that for uh, certain values of the of the flux, uh, frustration in the couplings appear. And as a result, there can be destructive interference among hopping paths along different links. The result is shown down here. So if we look at the ground state just with two plaquettes, two plaquettes are sufficient to see to see this effect. The ground state will have 
uh, particle density on all sides apart from the boundary ones because of this destructive interference um, that just yes, that happens uh, in this system. Also here we can uh, use our um, our cavity to together with the with the periodic drive. So the periodic drive is used to engineer the, the magnetic, the artificial magnetic fluxes that give us frustration. And then the cavity uh, is set uh, such as to uh, pump the particle from the upper state to the lower state. This is just because if we inject one photon in the, in the central side, then this will have equal overlap with the upper side and, uh, and, the, and the lowest side, so the ground state. Once again, here I just compare like the final value that we obtain for the in this case for the particle density, uh, yes, that is also uh, reproduces, reproduced here. And also in this case, we can just uh, show that the ground state is, is um, prepared to a good accuracy. And also here I compare the result from the whole driven model with that obtained from our uh, time averaged model. Okay, with this, I can get to my conclusions. So I hope I convinced you that one can successfully integrate the ideas of flock engineering together with those of reservoir engineering in systems that are not simple two-level systems but are already more complex uh, quantum systems and this um, can be used to prepare and stabilize interesting states and in this respect I, I discussed in particular the the preparation of chiral ground set currents and of these Aronov bomb cages where our destructive interference localizes in some sense uh, the system in only uh, some smaller uh, subsystem. As a perspective, um, let me just say quickly two perspectives. One is the fact that um, although for very large systems we would expect that not to have a, um, an energy an energy di distinction between the states that we want to prepare that is sufficiently large for this reservoir engineering to work, still we can uh, exploit these ideas to uh, try to push the system towards a, a subspace which is well separated in energy from our initial subspace. And the natural applications that we look, we've already looked at is that of cooling between two energy bands that are well separated in energy. Another application is related to these high frequency expansions that I mentioned. So I discussed uh, the first order, so a time average that allowed us already to study artificial magnetic fields. But also if one considers also higher orders, in these high frequency expansions, then one can also mimic more complex phenomena like three spins interactions or next to nearest neighbors uh, coupling. OK, so this was uh, what I was wanted to talk today and uh, about. And I want to thank you very much for your attention. And I also thank uh, the other collaborator that worked that worked with me uh, at this project. That is my group leader, Andre, here. So thanks again. And I with this I conclude. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, Francesco, for the talk. Are there questions or comments from the audience? I don't see anyone. Yes, yeah, so, so maybe I, I oh, have okay. one. OK, yes, please. Yes, so uh, I wanted to ask uh, what kind of uh, method you use for the simulation uh, on the two plaquettes. Yes. I, okay, essentially I solve uh, the, the, okay, let me just go back. I basically solve this uh, Lindblad equation in time. So including uh, what I have here inside this H of T is this whole Hamiltonian down here. So I have, uh, yes, my atomic Hamiltonian, say my Hamiltonian of my superconducting qubits, which includes these periodic drivings. And these periodic drivings are, the parameters inside here are, chosen such that, oh, give me just a second. Yes, such, okay, such as to uh, have exactly situations where one, at the end of which oscillation period gets Hamiltonians where one has this, for instance, pi half flux and certain values of the of the tunneling parameters, which are also renormalized to the periodic driving. And uh, yes, then for the dissipative parts, I'm including, again, uh, I'm talking about Limblad dissipators, assuming that uh, this is familiar to you, but if, if it's not, just tell me. And yeah, no, okay. no, not very much, but okay, I understood that you are uh, ah, you are okay. you are solving the the question of motion, basically. Yeah, I'm super. So I'm super sorry. Okay, so yes, I'm solving. The, okay, one can if one would have a non-dissipative system, one can solve the standard uh, you you will von Neumann equation, which is just 
the Schrodinger equation written down for the density matrix. If mm -hmm. there is also dissipation, one has to include extra yeah, terms. Yeah, no, that, 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 I, yeah that, that I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. That that take into account this. This is like this is like an established formalism, and it's just uh, computationally demanding because of course I need to include a few levels for each of these of these uh, superconducting qubits, plus a few levels plus a few levels for each cavity, and then the dissipative dynamics requires to solve for the density matrix, so you have n, n squared entries rather, you have to solve for a matrix rather than from a single vector mm -hmm. state. So that's also, yes. The, okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other question or comment? I have one question, I mean, which is related to the numerical simulation. So you did, uh, I mean, your results are primarily on two plaquettes. Is it mm -hmm. realistic to extend this to more plaquettes? From a computational point of view, yes. So uh, one can can certainly go at least to three, maybe four, maybe even four. The the problem is rather to find. Uh, okay, all these plots are I think they are nice, and but still they require some parameter search because because uh, again there is this condition that requires all this tuning of different uh, spectral gaps and of the driving frequency to avoid unwanted resonances. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the larger system, the, the more lar the larger the larger is the system, the more one would need to to try a bit parameters to be sure not to end up in some unwanted uh, resonance that would spoil mm -hmm. this, this phenomenon. But uh, yes, I think that yes. So uh, what I'm saying is that maybe three plaquettes will require a few hours, but if one wants to really make an extensive parameter search that, that would is that that is this the thing that would make it a bit uh, hard let's say not the single shot simulation let's say i see okay so uh, any other question or comment so if not i think we can move uh, to the second uh, speaker <laughs>